Hi, my name is Mark Polt, and I'm a real estate investor in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina area, What you would call a no frills, no thrills real estate investor. If you're looking for somebody who's got a big fancy car in the background, nice studio office, or somebody wants to sell you a $19.95 a month subscription to their newsletter, I'm not that guy. Check out a different channel. So I was checking out the, the Joe Rogan podcast on YouTube, uh, and he had Dr. Phil on there. Not a huge Dr. Phil fan. There's, um, you know, how about that girl, and... It just, it seems more tabloidish than uh, than I want to. Don't get me wrong, I like a good Jerry Springer from time to time. Morton Downey Jr., I think, was a guy back in the 80s. Scar, crazy. And, um, you know, I, I enjoy those every once in a while, but I have a lot going on in my life, and, you know, Dr. Phil is not really a part of it. And I was watching some clips, because, you know, if you don't know anything about Joe Rogan, he's a long-form podcaster, so, uh, you know, he does a minimum of two hours with whoever he's with, typically, and it could go over three. So I think the Dr. Phil one was at least three hours. Um, I don't have the desire to, to sit down for three hours in most cases. There are some um, some podcasts which I will. And I was surprised at how, um, how different Dr. Phil came across on there. He came across as extremely smart, intelligent, and um, you know, had great insights. And one of the things that uh, he had mentioned, I only, I think I watched like five clips. If I'm not mistaken, I think they put out a bunch of clips before they put out the full, the full, uh, full long form format uh, YouTube. And he was talking about, uh, they talked about all kinds of things, but he was talking about people not making meaningful change. And we find most people, I find most people, I think you probably would too, most people are stuck in a box. They're they got a nine to five job. They hate they hate their commute. You know, uh, probably don't like their family too much. They don't like their financial situation too much. They don't like their bills too much. Uh, but they won't do anything about it. I find it very interesting, and I know I'm getting a slightly bit off topic, but uh, my wife works with somebody who is kind of going through bankruptcy. I think she's going through bankruptcy, and you know. The solu- it seems like everyone's solution in the nursing industry is, well, I don't have enough money, so I'm going to go back to school. Uh, or I'm going to take a second job. And she's talking about working nights and weekends in addition to her day job, which I I don't know how you would do it. I mean, you might be you might be able to. I, I would think you would have to supplement that with drugs to uh, in order to stay awake and stay focused. I would be way too grumpy. I mean, I already have a great shining personality now when I'm on conference calls. When I don't get sleep, it gets even worse. So my propensity to put up with other people's BS goes down dramatically the more that I'm tired or hungover or whatever. So people rather, but that's not really making meaningful change. Um, Meaningful change would be, you know, starting a business, becoming more financially literate, um, you know, just kind of taking the reins and realizing that having a W-2 job is one of the worst tax brackets you're ever going to be in, that you're never probably going to get ahead. Um, so to get back to what Dr. Phil was saying, you know, he said, time is going to go on. The next 10 months are going to happen, whether you decide to make meaningful change or not. So you're not going to escape time. It's just, it's going to continue on. You know, the old um, Metallica, Time Marches On. Time Marches On. By the way, I just saw them recently twice. Fantastic concerts. If you can go to the smaller venue ones, they're more expensive, much, much better than the big venue ones. Anyways, so why not try to make some meaningful change? Why not, you know, start with, I'll tell you how I would do it. I'm sure he's, I mean, being a clinical psychologist, he's going to have something different. You know, start by reading self-help books. Start by um, watching YouTube videos on self-improvement. Um, get a mentor. Go through some coaching courses. And it doesn't really matter which ones you do. Though I will say, if you're going for counseling, I think counseling is bad for the most part. And I, I say that because I think it's ineffective. Um, for example, marriage counseling. I went to marriage counseling and uh, with my first wife. And marriage counseling was all about conflict resolution. <laughs> And what I've learned through my journey to figure out why I got divorced, why the relationship failed and stuff like that is that that is a terrible, terrible way to go to counseling. 
that the number one thing that you should do in counseling for marriage counseling is you need to build love. That should be the number one thing. Conflict resolution can be a close second, but everything you do has to be about love building. Because typically by the time you get into to marriage counseling, there's a lot of resentment, a lot of animosity. There could be downright hatred amongst each other. And if you can't build that love back up, it doesn't matter how well you are at conflict resolution, the marriage is probably going to fail or it's, it's going to be a terrible marriage if it doesn't. So I'm not a huge fan of most counselors, um, but I am a big fan of mentors. Go find out somebody who's done it. And I'm not talking about your grandpa who's married for 80 years. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, uh, I don't, I don't know, maybe a Dave Ramsey counselor. I assume that he's got a pretty good system. I don't know it for sure. I decided to take a different path. And, um, but, you know, I did get counseling. Well, I got coaching is what I would call it. And, you know, had held myself accountable to that. So, anyways, to get back to the topic, why not make meaningful change? It's not going to, I can't see it hurting you, right? Your situation is already probably pretty bad. Why not Why not stop? And I say this all the time to people. I'm like, how about we stop? If How about we stop doing what doesn't work, right? So if what you're doing every day isn't working for you, your job sucks, you know, you're in bills, all, your bills are piling up, you know, your car's always broken down, your man's always cheating on you or your woman's always cheating on you, whatever. I'm like, how about we stop doing what doesn't work and try something radically different? You know, it may not work either, but how about we try something different? And of course, nobody ever does that because most people are, I find the vast majority of people are deathly afraid of change. They will not change for anything. It's more scary than staying in an abusive relationship. So I'm gonna end with that. These are my thoughts on, uh, on you know, the Dr. Phil, Joe Rogan. I'll, I'll try to link it in the uh, comment section below if I can find it. Um, and you know, why not try some meaningful change? Because, you know, time's going to march on whether you make change or not. So tell me your thoughts. like to hear them below. Hope you go out there and live the You Won't Stop Me uh, lifestyle. It's all about getting the knowledge, wisdom, and experience so that no matter what happens in your life, you get a divorce, your wife takes it all, you know, you uh, get in an accident that you're responsible for and the lawyers take it all, you just get it all back. There are always good deals to be had, even in an up or down economy. Uh, obviously, there's more in one than the other. So, anyways, I wish you the success.